Hey everyone, it's Robin, the Artsy Bohemian. I'm here in my studio in Los Angeles, California, and I'm going to be showing you part two of the needle keep that we started last week. For those of you who just are joining, a needle keep is something that holds your needles and threads and buttons, and you can make them really, really cute. And um, even if you don't sew, you could use them for other things like maybe pencils or paintbrushes or little notebooks if you wanted to. So I'm going to continue on. It's sweltering in my studio, so I've been going back and forth on making this project. Um, it's about 80% humidity where I'm at right now, and it has been like that for a while. So I am going to attempt to try to finish this today um, for our Tuesday tutorial. So what I've done is I've already started some of the things kind of like what I do in most of my tutorials so you don't have to watch the whole thing of me spending hours <laughs> making the project but um, the first thing I wanted to show you is the covers this is going to be the cover of the needle keep and this for those of you who want to follow along just check out the video from last week and you'll see it I'm gonna have a list of videos um, down below in the description so what I did was uh, last time we met I showed you this little collage it's just two pieces of fabric that I sewed together and I'm going to be probably tacking it on here because um, I don't want to be able to see the other side so I'll probably tack it a little bit and then glue the rest and so I love these um, dress forms. I kept wanting to do this and so what I did was I just took the Tim Holtz die and I have it somewhere here. I'll show you for those of you who don't know. Most paper crafters have die cut uh, machines like a Biggs die cut and this is what you use. You can buy, you can buy, there's hundreds of them. This one goes through leather, fabric, uh, thin metal, of course paper and cardstock, and it's an awesome um, die to have. So there's three, there's a button, there's the dress form, and then the needle, the spool. So what I did was I um, cut the die from some felt, just felt that you can buy at the hobby store, and some. I, then I cut another one out of lace like this and I hand stitched all around it with just one strand of thread not I didn't double the the cord um, and so that's what I did on here I didn't glue it because I want to make sure I can still stick pins in it if you glue it the glue makes it kind of hard so that's why I hand stitch it you can see on the back how I hand stitched it just with one strand of um, thread and then I'm going to put a little skirt on her so I just took some lace and I did a gathering stitch and I'm going to sew that down and then I wanted to show you these cute little pins I've been so inspired inspired by a new group on Facebook called Dan damsels in lace and I'll put a link down below um, Debbie Spencer and another gal named Georgian. Um, I think Georgian's the one who started it. She has kits that you can buy. They're really gorgeous kits um, with lots of laces and stuff. So if you want, if you're interested, you can check out their link down below. Like I said, it's a Facebook group, and all you have to do is join it. And um, they have all kinds of inspiration, and there's kits that you can buy. So if you don't have a lot of stuff to make these things then um, that would be a great place for you to start. Um, and so they also have these beautiful pins that they make out of beads and other things. And so I'm doing a little bit of a twist. I'm using some flowers, some millinery, and the little bits of felt that I had cut, I think I had told you last time I was gonna be saving them. So when I made these um, little felted needle pin thingies, I kept all the little bits that I had cut like this and I'm going to be I'm using them to make a little faux leaf on this so I'll show you how to do that and let me just um, I guess I'll just go ahead and do that right now 
I am going to take what you need is a really nice quilting pin. These are amazing. They're very, very, very sharp. They're a little bit more expensive than regular straight pins and they're a little bit thinner. They're longer as well, but they're quilting pins by Clover. They work great. If I find a link, I'll put it down below for you. And they usually have a little ball head pin on them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, and you can do this with lots of different things. I kind of experimented. <clears throat> so I have these old millinery flowers. They're made out of velvet. And I'm gonna show you other more newer versions. And you're going to take and because these are so sharp, they just go right through the back. Push it all the way through like that. And then I just took a little bit of this uh, leftover trim and cut it and then made a cute little um, leaf with it. I also, when you make these die cuts, you get these faux buttons. So uh, I saved those and I'm just gonna pink the edges and this gives a nice little background to the flower and then you just glue it all together and it also covers up the back. Just need a little tiny, all these little pieces come in handy. So I just kind of bent it over like that and then push the pin through. Like that and then glue this down. And there you go, you have a cute little pin. Um, and it's gonna be so fun to look at when you open up your needle case. So other versions of this would just be You can buy these in abundance at, you know, hobby stores, these little roses, the little ribbon roses, and you can stick a pin right through the center and glue it down, and there you go, you have a, a pin that's already decorated. I did it with a couple of other things, like these little felted balls, little felted pom-poms. Same thing, just poked it through, and I put um, a sequin on top. There's another one with the, it's another ribbon rose. And I did the same thing, I just pinned it in the back. And you can put a little backing on that if you want to. And then also, um, you can make little bows with some silk ribbon and put that on there. can kind of go crazy doing all this stuff but these are my favorite I love the way these look so uh, also one other thing I wanted to show you you know you can get the the fake flowers at most hobby stores so you can get these and then cut off the end and then poke the needle that these are kind of big but if you have like a big um, one of those corsage pins that might work I'm gonna stick this to the center I had made some hat pins with these at one point and that goes all the way through I didn't put it right into the middle it's a little off center but you get the drift so those are very accessible as well, and those make real pretty um, pins for your your needle keep. I'm gonna take those out. I 
these were just for samples. I'm not sure I'm going to use those, but okay. So I I'm going to go ahead and sew this down, and I'll be right back. I'm going to sew it down just with a couple of stitches, and then this just is going to go right in here for embellishment, so it looks kind of cute sitting there. Okay, so I sewed this on. I really am loving the way it's coming out, and I am hoping that you are able to follow along and that you have some of the similar supplies and materials that I have. Um, so what I did, I haven't, I'm going to be gluing this down, which I don't really like to do, um, but I don't want to sew it because then I'll see it on the back. Um, unless I did some kind of decorative embroidery stitch, which I could do. Um, so that's an option if you don't want to glue this whole panel down for the cover. Um, I sewed this little skirt on and I sewed all the way around the edges of the dress form and then um, I just sewed it to the back just in a loose kind of a basting stitch just to, just to keep it on there and then this is the little pin that we um, decorated so that's going to go on there I also wanted to show you that I had uh, top stitched the denim with black thread all around the edge and then I sewed this um, lace on here I'm going to do some a basting stitch here so this is not open like that and kind of just keep that down and then when we finally sew the center that'll keep this whole piece down so that's what I did on that and um, I wanted to show you this <clears throat> this is a, a very old felted uh, pin like, like a souvenir pin from Yuma Arizona I got it at a flea market years ago and I just love this old felt work with beading and who knows it could have been made by um, Native Americans Yuma is for those of you who don't know is in Arizona and it's on the border of California and Arizona so <clears throat> I'm assuming it's a souvenir pin from years ago. It looks pretty old to me. And so I thought, how pretty. This will go really nicely with everything. And it still has the felt. I can still put pins in it. I could, you know, put pins underneath because it's just pinned uh, with a little safety pin in the back. That's how they did it. I had to repair it a little. There were some beads missing, so I added the beads on there. So that's going to be uh, part of the... Uh, needle keep uh, for this and so that's that and that and then the other thing I did was I did sew this down here on the sides I didn't do that last time and I basted the um, the bottom here looks like I based I don't think I sewed yeah I didn't sew this part I was gonna sew this with black um, thread as well and again when this gets sewed down the center it'll hold everything in place I um, also decided I was like well what do I want to put in this what I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be housing old things from my grandma she was a seamstress and she has this really old probably antique um, oil can made from brass so I'm going to put that in here I'll find it and show it to you and also a really old awl that she had and so also I love when I go to flea markets I collect any kind of sewing ephemera so I have lots of old um, needles and so this will be just a great place to keep those and also these amazing button cards that I just love the graphics on so I think this will be a great keepsake for my vintage things that are just kind of like hanging around and they're just going to get ruined if I don't um, put them somewhere to keep them safe. Also, <clears throat> I love these tiny little scissors that I have. When my husband bought me my latest sewing machine, the people had given them to him and I thought, oh, how cute. They're not the best. They're not super sharp, but they're so cute. So they're too small 
and they go through these little places that we made already. So I'm making another place to put them and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I found some coordinating velvet trim. It's like our velvet rickrack and I'm going to pin it there with these cute little buttons and this will be a, play, a great place to put my little scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I thought it would be fun to do it with um, some coordinating embroidery floss. So since this is already sewed down it's a little tricky. I'm going to pin this in place so it doesn't move. Those of you who know about velvet it has a mind of its own and it moves when it wants to move so I'm going to keep it in place and sew these cute little old buttons down if I can. It's going to be a little difficult because I'm going through lots of layers especially this denim but I want it I want it to look this way so that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to stick this through here first. I'll do a couple um, stitches and then I'll come back with the finished piece. Just thought I would show you how I'm starting this. Probably gonna have to grab some pliers. So I'm going to sew this down and I will have to use pliers to pull it through because it's really tough. Even though this is a really sharp <clears throat> embroidery needle that I'm using. So I'll be right back when I'm done. Okay, so I sewed these on. They're super cute, but I realized <laughs> that it's this is where it's bending. So I can't put my scissors in this little area here, but I can still put them on the side because they're tiny enough. And um, that'll give me the um, width that I need to, to make sure they stay in place. So still looks cute. I still like it. And who knows, I might add little, um, maybe I'll put little uh, crochet hooks in there or um, safety pins to hook on there. It'll still be useful. So I was looking at the original instructions. And for those of you who are just starting to follow along, I'll leave the link down below. This is um, a gal that I work with <clears throat> down in Costa Mesa. We teach classes at a place called Peacemakers sometimes. And um, I mean, not obviously not now because of the um, pandemic, but she has this on her uh, Etsy store. So if you want to uh, buy this, it's only $1.50. Crazy. Super great price. Um, and there's colored pictures and instructions. So that's what I've been following along. I'm not following it exactly. And so I just wanted to show you what I'm doing that's different from what she's doing in case you're wondering. Uh, okay, so just to recap. This is the inside page. And this is the outside page. So it's going to go like this and yes it is wonky and I like it like that so so once this is I'm going to be gluing this down um, what she did is she put lots of laces around hers before she sewed everything down I'm going to be using rickrack I think it just goes better with the style that I'm doing I do love lace but I'm doing it um, in a different style so um, I will be gluing it probably. Um, it's possible that I might do some fancy stitching instead, but I am probably going to wind up gluing it and it's going to go along all the edges. It's a um, super pretty color. I love this color. So that's what I'm doing instead of putting the laces like she did. And also, she has six of these guys three on each side that go like this or like this. I don't want to cover up the laces, so I'm not going to add those. 
I um, will be still using them on this side to some extent like that and then maybe I'll put one down here maybe I'll cover one of these pockets with one or may I might just make a smaller one um, because she puts one on her pocket but she didn't put lace on it like I did so I kind of want to keep the lace open and then this is a little different than what she had her tool belt stopped on either side but mine extended um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it open a little bit here and tack it down um, maybe sew it down with a sewing machine or <clears throat> just hand stitch it because I thought this would be fun for a pen so I'll be keeping my one of my white pens in here for that so that's something you think of you know there's all kinds of ways um, we're going to be talking soon I uh, had contacted her to tell her I was showing this and she wanted to contact me and just uh, let you guys know that there's several different ways to approach this so if I get a chance I just haven't had a chance um, I will let you know um, her other ideas that she has. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put sequins along the edge here with beading and sequins. And I'll show you what I'm going to do for the first couple and then I'll come back and show you it done. So um, Here's a couple sequins. Whenever you're, you're putting sequins on, you have to put beads with them. So this is not for people who like tiny doing tiny things. So <laughs> you just have to make sure <clears throat> if you have a beading needle, you can use a beading needle. If you don't have a beading needle, just make sure the needle that you use will go through the bead. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters that it goes through the sequin, but the bead is more important because if it doesn't go through the bead, then you're not going to be able to sew it on. So just going to double check and these these are going to go on so maybe I'll make this a little closer so what you're going to do is you're going to get some thread if you um, just have regular sewing thread you can use that this one is a little bit thicker this is for quilting and it's it's a little bit thicker and stronger or uh, if you're a beater then you know you can use fire line you can use that as well so you're going to tie a knot at the end and just start sewing the sequins on so what this is going to do because this is open like this I didn't sew it down it's going to tack it in place so you're going to add a sequin and then add a bead, pull it all the way down and then you're going to go past the bead that you put in and then through the sequin and this stops the sequin from falling off. So you can just keep doing that if you're going to follow along with me and do the same thing. I'll do it again. Put a sequin on. Pull it down and then another bead. pull that down and then go past the bead into the hole of the sequin you're not going to go through the same hole of the bead because that'll that won't work so you're just going to keep doing that until it's all tacked down and I'll see you when I get back I will probably also have the uh, rick rack on everything so you can see it because now we're just doing the decorating part and um, yeah, it's coming out. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, by the way, I wanted to thank everybody for their sweet comments and their stories about needle keeps and 
their children's clothing and reusing it and I had a really nice lady um, tell me that I can't remember her name I'm so sorry I'll have to check it out um, that wool, the wool in the felt has lanolin in it and it helps um, the needle slide in there and I think it might even protect it so that's a fun fact I will leave a um, link down below also for a really amazing uh, website I found that that's all they sell is beautiful merino wool felt so it's like a 35 65 mix and then they also have 100% wool I bought a ton of it and I'm hoping it comes in tomorrow so I can show you guys so I will see you when I get back okay so I sewed on all of the little sequins here I left a little space in the center because it will be folded and I also glued uh, a little tiny lace on here um, on the back and the front of the needle keep and this is the front and this will go here still um, so I thought I'd show you that and then for this I worked on this last night while I was watching TV and I'm going to just show you the rest of it so you can see what I did I took rickrack this pretty rickrack that I like and I did what's called a French knot on every um, point so I'll show you how to do that and then I'm also going to be gluing down this little tiny baby rickrack on top of this velvet trim that I put on here like this and I had glued this on as well and then I made some little flowers with the little um, this is not focusing with the little pieces that I've been cutting off And they're going to go right here um, because there's this break in the color and I didn't like how it looked like that. So I will show you the French knot. I've already, I already have my uh, embroidery floss ready to go and I have a knot in it. And usually you want to do about an arm's length um, so you don't get it too tangled. Just for the record, I'm using this. This isn't particularly expensive. It's it's used for um, friendship bracelets, and it's just colorful, and I got it at Michael's maybe two years ago or something. So you can get this. You can use, you know, DMC is perfectly fine. That's the one that's been around forever. Or if you're really shishi and bougie, you probably have the really good stuff, um, which is pretty expensive, and you can normally get it in... Um, specialty stores so this is going to go like this so I'm not going to really worry about it I'm just going to start right here and maybe I will put a little closer I'm going to move this out of the way pin that down So because this is double sided, I made a point of making sure that it didn't go through the other side. So um, I'm going to hide the knot right under here just to start. And it's really important to use a good embroidery needle. I never used to pay attention to that kind of stuff, but it makes such a big difference. You know, a good tool makes all the difference. Um, and you can get, um, and again, Clover is also a really good company for embroidery needles. This one is an assortment. And the reason why they're good is because they have a large eye so that you can put your embroidery floss in it. And they're super sharp and strong. Um, whereas just a regular needle, like a sharp, what they call a sharp, is is good for you know hand sewing in general but this is really for 
uh, embroidery. So I'm going to, I'm just putting my needle through here and I'm making sure it's just picking up the top layer. And because this is really heavy duty fabric, I, I have a pair of pliers that I'm pulling the uh, needle through. So this is where the technique comes. So you're going to take your needle in your dominant hand, you're gonna grab your embroidery floss and you're going to wrap it around three times. One, two, three. Then you're gonna take that, and I'm actually gonna do it one more time just on the other side, it just makes it easier. You're gonna take your needle and put it in the same area that you started, and then you're going to come up to the other point here, because this is where I'm gonna be doing the next uh, French knot. And then pull it through or not. Boy, that one's got a tough one. Okay, this didn't happen to me the whole time I was doing this last night. And there, there's your first one. So again, I'm going to take your needle, wrap it, your um, embroidery floss around it three times. One, two, three, and it's actually three and a half, so it kind of stays to the side. Bring it up to the next area that you're going to be making your knot. And I had put a pin in here to hold it in place. One, two, three and a half. Then I kind of pull it to bring the thread right flush to the area that I'm putting the needle in. Just keep moving it around so that it's um, going to be easier for you to do this. Do it one more time and then I'll come back and show you when it's done and then we'll do the rick rack here. So one, two, three and a half. Put it in the area that you just came out of. Only grab the top part of the fabric and then back out to the next area that you're going to be making your French knot. Okay, so we're almost done. I'm gonna show you the rest of the embellishments that I had added on here. Everything pretty much is glued down or sewed on. And I was gonna go ahead and sew up the center and I thought, well, I should probably show you um, individually each piece and then I'll sew it up with all the goodies inside like my needles and my thread. Well, maybe not thread, but some of my scissors and my tools. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when I sew it all up, but I wanted to show you I glued down the front and the best glue for this is the fabric tack. It dries 
quickly and there's no bubbles and there's no there's nothing showing there's no uh, shadow of the glue showing through um, so it really is great and also what it does is it gives it a little bit it makes it a little bit stiffer which is good because since this is fabric it's a little bit flimsy even though I used a fairly heavy-duty um, fabric so that um, I already showed you th that I glued all along the edges here uh, with this lace and I just placed these where I think I want them to go I'm, I didn't glue them down yet because once I sew it I'll have a better idea of where to place them but that won't be hard because I'll just be gluing them you saw the sequins I made this I think it came out really cute this is a felted heart that a friend of mine had given me several years ago and I just loved it I thought I was gonna make a piece of jewelry from it and I never did and I found it while I was searching for stuff and I thought this would be such a cute little pop-up pin cushion it's super soft it's made from wool and I just poke my my pins in there it might make my book a little bulky but that's okay it's gonna be bulky anyway so I had used the heart shape to as a template to cut three more layers of different colors of the wool felt <clears throat> if you wanted to do something like that so I think that's it on that so that's the the cover and I feel like I need to do something on the back but it's getting to the point where I'm getting tired and I need to finish this so it's taking me a lot longer than I thought it would um, so I had finished off the um, the French knot. I love this color combination. It reminds me of a little kid, like something I would have seen or made when I was a little kid. It's very whimsical. I love the colors, the way the colors came out. <clears throat> so I sewed all this down with the the French knot. I glued down this velvet rickrack, or it's not really rickrack. It's a velvet trim. And then a tiny rickrack on top. Glued it very carefully because I didn't want the glue to come. I don't want you to see that it was glued. And again, it gives it a nice sturdy effect. If I wanted to, I could have sewed it, but I don't. I didn't want the the sew line on there. I then made these adorable little flowers, similar to what we did with the pins, and glued those down. I added this really pretty pink trim all along the edges here and I glued that as well this is just pinned in there this is one of the other felt things and then this side is that flap and it works really great for these needles to keep needles in there and then this is going to keep my little white pin <clears throat> that I love that goes right there. Um, I and I sewed this. This is pretty hard to sew because it was so thick with the from the denim and the several layers. So <clears throat> did that, and then this is going to flap over. Um, and I probably will glue that down. It's a very vintage, almost probably antique piece of Middle Eastern textile that has a shisha mara in it um, and I glued that down <clears throat> so I am going to sew it down the center onto this piece when it's sewed up I'm gonna fill it with my things and then I'll be right back one thing I'm going to be doing which I don't do very often but because there's so many layers I figured and there's, it's kind of wonky shaped anyway. Um, I do want it to look somewhat nice. So I w made sure I pinned it so that the lace was showing on the bottom. And then I took a marker and marked the just tiny marks with the black ink pen. You can use chalk if you want, whatever. Um, I just figured I'm gonna be, it's gonna be sewn with black thread so it'll be okay. And then I pinned it and I was going to sew it and I thought I better baste it. So what basting is, for those of you who don't know, is you're going to go through with really uh, large stitches and like just like what I'm doing here. And it holds everything in place um, along with your pins. 
and um, it's good because this is so um, there's so many layers to this that and it's also uh, very thick that I wanted to make sure it doesn't shift too much so um, at least I'll know that this will stay in place and also it'll give me a guideline like that's not good right there to um, a, a line of where to sew so I wanted just to show you that um, in case you're wondering for those of you who are seamstresses if I was going to baste and yes I am so I'm gonna baste this all the way down to the bottom and then sew it with a sewing machine all right I'm so excited I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. I'm going to do a flip through of this and then I'll, at the very end of the video, I'm going to try to have some still shots so that you can get close ups. Um, and then I'm also, before I finish this whole series, I'm going to show you how to make a, a needle book without sewing because I told you I would in the last um, tutorial. I'm also going to show you um, a surprise that I got in the mail. Well, it's not a surprise because I ordered it, but I got it pretty quick and I'm super excited. So, um, here she is, super chunky and I just love it. I love all the colors. I love looking at it and seeing the layers of different colors. And it opens up. I'm not sure I'm going to keep this because I think it's pretty fragile. Even though I love the way it looks, it's real bulky and it might just kind of come apart but here's one of the pockets I didn't fill every single pocket I tried to but it was getting pretty stuffed so this is the pin that we made I love these thanks to Debbie Spencer and George Ann I um, saw how cute their little needle keeps were and the pins that they made I just loved them and then also um, I think in the kits George Ann has these die cut felt pieces that are kind of ornate and they look like frames and they're so, so pretty. So check the um, link down below for Damsels and Lace. It's a Facebook group and um, you can contact Georgian for kits because you, you'll, you'll be able to see some of the samples of some things that people have made and probably blow, blow your mind. Also, I wanted to say thank you to Chris for um, having this tutorial. There's so many possibilities. It's really fun. I just got an email from her. Um, unfortunately, she lives up in Northern California, and if you've been seeing the news, uh, it's on fire. Northern California is on fire again, and it's so scary. And unfortunately, she had to evacuate her home to a hotel, and then from a hotel, she had to be evacuated. So she seems to be keeping her spirits up high. She was blown away I guess you guys bought tutorials from her site so she's very thankful and um, I'm gonna link, leave a link again below for her Etsy store she has very reasonable prices not only on this tutorial but lots of other tutorials and also some artwork that she makes so thanks for the love um, so carrying on here here is one of my button cards and I made a couple more of these pins um, and these are just a little bit different. These are newer flowers, which are not hard to find. Oh, I don't know why this is not. Um, yeah, they're not as hard to find like these older uh, millinery <coughs> uh, flowers. <coughs> Here's a, uh, a very old piece of Middle Eastern textile with the shisha mirror that I put on and this just fits right in there. My cute little scissors fit right there. Uh, then I added some more of my button cards in here and my pen fits over here. I have my ruler. I can put trims. I still have more space in these two areas here. And This is where the um, needles go. My pins. I made another little pin there. And another bird card. I mean, um, pretty be a uh, button card. I just love it. It's so beautiful. I love the graphics on old um, packaging. 
and this is something I had made a while ago. It's an, I, I kind of made it as a little needle carrier. I made it out of paper actually. It's kind of my technique to make paper fabric and with collage. <clears throat> so there's two pockets here. So I thought I would just add that in here. Also, you guys, if there's anything you ever want me to show you to make, if you see something and that I'm showing you and if you want to learn how to make it, just let me know. Here's my little thingy. And then this is something I made a while ago too. It's a little pocket that I had um, embroidered on. So there you go. I just love it. I love the way it feels. It's going to be one of my fun things that I cherish and that I can, um, that I know where my old stuff is, my old buttons and some of my neat pins. I also added a bow right here. So for this, I had already started this. You kind of, you probably saw these last week when I was making the needle keeps. I made a couple of them. So just get some scrap uh, cardboard. You can use a toilet paper roll like this and then squish it and then cut it and it'll give you a base to glue your fabric on. If you use fabric tack, you'll have better luck um, with with because it won't show through and it dries fast. So you're just gonna take a toilet paper roll and cut it to size, um, the size of the cardboard and then glue it. You're just gonna glue two sides. I had sewn these, but you don't have to do that. I didn't sew it onto the cardboard. I sewed the fabric first and then I glued it down and I did it on all of these. This is that old quilt. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a piece of felt about a quarter of an inch smaller on all sides and you're just going to insert it in there and you have a cute little needle book and you can glue it down in the center like right in the spine here and you'll be done so if you don't have any if you don't want to sew you don't have a machine you don't know how to sew you can just glue glue everything um, and then you're ready to go you'll have a, a cute little needle book And this is what I ordered after the last tutorial. I got so excited because you guys are excited. By the way, thank you for all your sweet comments. You're, you're all, so a lot of you said that you've been wanting to make a needle keep for a long time and that this kind of is a jumping off point for you. So I have always loved felt and I forgot that I had had quite, I had made some things with it in the past. And so I started searching online for a wool blend and I bought, I bought a ton. I found this amazing website on Etsy. She actually has um, three stores. She has an Etsy store, her website, and then an Amazon store. I went to her website because oftentimes, just this is just a little trick for you guys to know, Etsy charges you money to, to list your products and they charge you when it's sold. So if you can go directly to an artist's website, you will get a discount. Not a huge discount, but you will get a discount. And so I saved about $30 by just going to her website um, because I couldn't decide what color. She has every color in the rainbow. There's 90 colors here, N090. And she has sold over 82,000 pieces. So you know she's doing well and that she has a good reputation. Five stars. <clears throat> and um, it's a wool blend. It's a beautiful, it feels beautiful. It's thin. I'm going to... Um, sample some by 
uh, putting them in the washer and then the dryer and felting them and see how they turn out. But I can't wait to dive into this and play. So this is about a 35-65 mix, I believe, of uh, merino wool and um, another, I don't know what the other fabric is that they use to make this, but I'm super excited. And I'm going to leave the link down below. Um, so if you want to buy, you can buy one piece if you want to. You don't have to buy, you know, what I did. But um, I figured, I don't know, I always like to buy, like, large quantities of something especially if I love it because what happens is it's a jumping off point for me to make projects and then uh, ultimately make kits so I like to have a lot on hand um, so anyway I hope you enjoyed this I know it was kind of a long tutorial I it took me a long time to make it because I kept adding things but I think the end result is fun and um, I probably have more stuff to say, but I forgot. Oh, I wanted to tell you, I haven't forgotten about the giveaway. I am going to be doing a giveaway. My goal is to have it ready in the next two weeks, maybe even sooner. And it'll be a good one, um, like I keep saying. So those of you who have subscribed will be in on it. And as a bonus... Um, if you subscribe to my newsletter on my website, you'll get two chances. If you're already an, if you are already a member, you just need to let me know so I can enter your name twice. Um, and there'll be more on that next Tuesday. I might even have it ready next Tuesday. Not promising. And I need to wrap up the uh, journal that we've been working on. So this was kind of a a distraction. I thought maybe I could stick it in my journal that we're making, but that's not going to happen because this is pretty fat. Plus, it's going to be something that I, I'm going to carry with me from my studio into my house. So, um, Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your wonderful comments. I love hearing your stories. And thank you, Lisa, for the tip on the lanolin and the wool. Um, a lot of you gave tips. I'm sorry if I've forgotten some of you that have given me some tips. There are some tips in the links, I mean the um, comments below from the last tutorial if you want to go look through those. There's some amazing seamstresses out there that are professional and they know their stuff, unlike me. <laughs> Although, also, I have a question. If any of you know what this is, please tell me. I see them all the time. I just bought a bag of them. I think they're so cute. I have no idea what they're for. So if you know, leave a, a comment down below. And thank you so much. See you next Tuesday. Needed to also show you that the company that sells this wool gives you this amazing sampler of all of their colors. So that's another thing that you will get if you buy. I don't know if you, if, if you have to buy a certain amount to get this, but look at how cool. It's like a, a makeup palette. Super cool.